What's up everybody, I'm Simon Sabro and today I got for y'all my main manga reading log. So before we jump into that, be sure to follow me on Instagram at SimonSabroYT. The link will always be down in the description. Also be sure to leave a like, subscribe, hit the bell so you don't miss our upload, all that good stuff. And comment down what you've been reading recently, you know, whether it's physical, digital, whatever. Just comment what you've been reading recently. So with all that out the way, let's just jump right into it. So normally I would start by talking about the digital manga, but I'm gonna save the digital for like towards the end. And I'm gonna just start out with the physical manga because I know that a lot of people mostly come here for the physicals and not a lot of people wanna get spoiled on the digital manga, but I will say towards the end, I am going to talk about um, Tokyo Revengers. I did recently catch up to it. Um, so I'm gonna, if you wanna see that, be sure to stick around to the end. But the first physical manga or, well, the first one we're gonna talk about is Colorless and this manga honestly okay so <laughs> i had this on my list of things i was really excited for to come out this year and i was not expecting this to be as good as i thought it would be um it's a here's the back of the book if you want to read it but it is kind of just a sci-fi dystopian post-apocalyptic kind of thing and honestly just the first couple of pages were just so cool to me so basically the manga is about uh color was taken from the world if you read it it would make a lot more sense than that but the first couple of pages start out in color and basically they're losing color at the moment in these first couple of pages if that makes sense but then i don't know like and then afterwards like right here just reading that i don't know something about it, it just felt so cool to me um and honestly just the art in here reminds me of something like uh no guns life for example and honestly the story the way the style of storytelling does as well kind of reminds me of no guns life and this like this manga is just so cool everything about it, the character designs the art the fights everything about it is just so cool this was probably one of my favorite reads this month honestly um Another thing is, I was talking to somebody on Instagram about this manga actually, and we were discussing about kind of just a, like how an anime for it would go. And we agreed that if this was like a noir style anime, like everything was just in black and white, just to kind of fit the theme, that would be really cool. And just imagining it, it just gets me excited for when this actually does get an anime or hopefully. I would definitely recommend it. Like I said, the everything about this manga just looks so cool, honestly. And I see like so much potential in this manga, honestly. And I'm I don't know if it's like complete in Japan or how much volumes it is or what, but I'm really excited for the rest of volumes of this or really just anything else that can the creator of this makes in the future because this I really enjoy it uh, so far. So the next thing I did read was Lynx by Natsuki Kizu, which is by the same creator of Given. And this is kind of just a short story. Not nah, sorry. When I first picked this up, I thought it was going to be like a short story kind of work, but it's just one big story about, I want to say, well, eight characters, um, four different groups of characters if that makes sense and honestly the i'll be very honest it was kind of hard for me to keep up with it all the way because due to the mangaka's art style a lot of characters do look kind of similar to me and i would kind of mix up certain characters for other characters but i did read it a second time just so i could you know actually catch it and this story is beautiful i just want to say that this story is beautiful the style of writing just eight different people and how their stories all come together and just the similarities of or rather just everybody just trying to figure out their own lives as well as their partner lives and if you're trying to get into bl manga i would honestly really recommend this one this one is extremely good i haven't read that many but this one 
I, it takes the cake. I'm sorry. This one is just so good. There's a lot of sensitive topics though um, that I would definitely tell you to probably research a little bit about, uh, maybe ask around and get an idea of what to expect from it. But honestly, like I said, Natsuki Kizu's art, amazing. Style of storytelling, amazing. The way they write characters is phenomenal. And I said in my manga haul that I'm really excited to get into, or not get into, but read the rest of Given. And I do plan on buying the rest of volumes for that pretty soon. Now, another one I did read is The Arm of Canon or Arm of Kanan, volumes one all the way through nine, but I'm only gonna show one here. And this manga, is another one that surprised me, honestly. Um, just off of the back of the book, I thought it was gonna be kind of like a Samurai Shampoo kind of story, where it's about this main character who's on a journey to find something and they have this samurai kind of protect them. That's what I thought it was gonna be at first, but no, volume one alone just surprised me so much. Um, I'm not sure how much of this I'm allowed to show because there's a lot of explicit things in here, but this manga, for one, the art style in here is really good. Um, it does get better as the volumes go on and it's in the beginning, it feels like just, you know, it's very old kind of art style and honestly, nothing's wrong with that. I actually really like it, but as you progress through the story, it's about this, uh, kind of relic called the arm of Senju Kanan or Kanan, sorry. And basically it just possesses people and whoever it's possessed by is has the power to grant all their desires. So in the beginning, we have this character who's nameless up until I think like volume three, I think he really didn't have a name. And he's the protector of our main character here, Ma Mao. And this is his sister, Mayo. So this, like I said, the art in here is really cool, as well as just character designs was really cool. Um, the characters themselves didn't have the most depth to them, and this story does have like two different arcs. I think it has one arc where it's just talking about the arm of canon. That's about like the first five volumes, I think. Then there's uh, the angel fist kind of arc, which is I think like two volumes, and then it comes back to the arm of canon. But this manga, it started out pretty slow in the beginning, but after, I don't know, man. <laughs> this manga is really like all over the place. I don't want to spoil too much, but like I said, the art in here and the battles were some of my favorite parts of this manga. And it does introduce a lot of cooler characters towards the end. And this really just overall surprised me a lot. I would definitely recommend it. It does have a lot of, um, explicit content in here but still really really good and after that another one that has some explicit content and probably my favorite read of this month was sensei's poise lie or puyas lie i'm not sure how to pronounce it by akane torikai and this manga is or torikai actually is the wife of Inio asana which is the creator of goodnight pun pun so it's pretty dark. <laughs> I just want to put that out there. Um, like I said, this manga is extremely, extremely sensitive. Um, if you plan on checking this out, definitely do a lot, a lot of, lot of research on it beforehand, because this, for one, I wasn't expecting this kind of story at all. I'll be very honest. Um, I did talk a little bit about this on my Instagram. So if you would like to get maybe like a little bit more of what I said about it, definitely check it out on there. I also did buy some more manga right after my manga haul before. So if you wanna see those, they are on my Instagram. Once again, the link is in the description, but this manga is about our main character named Mizuru, Mizura. I forgot what exactly it was, but yeah, she's, for one, this character has, not everything is revealed in the first volume, but she has been through a lot. And she has a belief that um, men and women are not equal, which is explained by, like I said, her backstory. But there's also another character whose name I forgot, but this guy here who 
believes that men and women are more equal and just watching these two characters and their conflicting views on the world as well as just uh the main character mizuru hara um her opinions on the world and just her view of people in general is just so fascinating and i feel like a lot of the characters in here are very dislikable and not because they're poorly written written characters but because they just represent a certain side of humanity that is really disgusting and i think torika does a really good job of portraying that through really every character that's revealed so far in just the first volume like i said i would highly highly recommend this but it is extremely extremely sensitive and i would definitely recommend checking out maybe uh some other people's manga reviews or just do some type of research on this manga but this was probably my favorite read of last month in general um another one i did enjoy was the death note short stories this honestly i wish there was some more in here but i really can't complain at all honestly as usual um the art in here by Takeshi Obata is extremely stunning. Um, I honestly can't complain. I would hope to see more Death Note because I love Death Note, honestly. It's one of my favorite manga. The stories in here were really cool. Um, it, there's really not much I can say about this manga. I believe I did talk a little bit about it in my manga haul but I, yeah there's not much i could say about this manga if you're a fan of death note definitely read this I, of course i'm sure you've probably already read it if you are a fan of death note but one of my favorite stories was towards the end where it was kind of like l's backstory and that was yeah one of my favorite stories honestly to read as well as there was like um these kind of four panel kind of things right here this was also really cool as well as the last story which i'm not really going to talk about because that was like i said my favorite story and hopefully if anything we could talk about it in the comments if you ever want to talk to me about manga my dms are always available on instagram or you could always comment i'll be happy to respond but the last physical manga i did read for this month was crazy food truck now this was another one i was excited for the release of in fact i think all of these i was excited for the release of but crazy food truck this is a fun manga it it felt like a mixture of sakamoto days and psalm 100 <laughs> and this manga was just so much fun to read um it's about our main character here named gordon who's running a food truck but the world kind of seems bland like there's not a lot of people that are left on the planet or rather just the section they live in not too sure but yeah gordon runs a food truck and he's just going around collecting materials trying to sell food and he comes across this one character there's also a lot of fan service in this manga but it is what it is um but yeah he comes across this one character i'm trying to find a picture of her without the fan service but basically this character up here and she's a wanted fugitive by some organization and she goes right here and i'm not gonna say it but you you start to learn more about gordon here too and a lot of things about her just in the first volume and it's just so fun because every chapter feels kind of episodic but at the same time it also kind of comes back to each other like i said very similar to zom 100 if you've read it and this the art in here is really cool really clean the two characters are both really fun she's extremely energetic he's not so energetic just their dynamic together i'm really a fan of it. um and as well as i'm only going to talk about what's in chapter one here but yeah just the two characters getting to know each other learning to kind of i guess enjoy each other's company and just learn more about each other again is really fun really cool i would definitely recommend checking out crazy food truck but 
let's jump into the digital manga I've read. Now, one that I want to talk about real quick is Super Smartphone, which is a new manga that came out or a new series that came out in Shonen Jump. And this manga, um, I think at the time of this recording, it should be like four or five chapters out right now. I'm really not too much a fan of it, I'll be very honest, but it does seem to have a lot of potential. It's about this character named Q who is on a search for his missing brother and he's very smart and he kind of just gets blessed with this super smartphone and the super smartphone has the ability to kind of just search up anything, whether it's confidential information, uh, just a lot of things. So he kind of has to use that and find his brother. It's a very interesting plot for a Shonen Jump manga. So with that alone, I'm very interested in where it's gonna go. The first two chapters I wasn't really liking, but chapter three and four, I actually really liked. Um, I'll definitely put up a couple of pictures here and there. The art of it is really clean, I'll be very honest. It's not too fancy, but it's not ugly. I, I like it. It's a very clean art style. I'm really looking forward to see what else it's going to have or, you know, what kind of course it's going to take. They did introduce um, an antagonist, so I'm expecting some good things from that manga, not going to lie. The next thing was the Ayashimon, and I, I'm really hurt that Ayashimon got canceled because that was one of my favorite series in Shonen Jump. and it sucks man it sucks honestly but i i love the ayashimon i haven't read hell's paradise by the same creator which is yuji kaku but ayashimon it was just such a fun battle manga and i loved reading it every single week and to see it and i'm not too i've heard that it was going to get canceled like way before but the way it got canceled just the way that last chapter ended is what hurts the most because um another manga i love that got canceled was phantom seer and phantom seer's last chapter it was like okay you know it, it had some type of closure to it but ayashimon it just i don't know it just ended like mid-fight like if you've ever read zombie powder here and you ever just read like it all the way through and then once you get to the last chapter, it just ends right in the middle of a fight. It's like, why? <laughs> why? Like, it, it just hurts, but I don't want to spend too much time on that one. Let's just keep moving on. My Hero Academia has been... The last, like, three, four chapters, I think. Um, them, them last three, four chapters with uh, Todoroki and Dobby were just amazing that that's all i'm gonna say they were just amazing and i can't wait to see that get animated as well as just see other people get to that part and just hear them talk about it, especially like yeah in the anime that would be really really good i'm really looking forward to that another one is doran dorararan um i have been talking about this manga since it first got into the magazine and Honestly, my opinion on it has changed a lot. When I first was reading it, like maybe like the first 10, 15 chapters, I think, I wasn't really feeling it. It was, it was okay. And then now it's starting to kind of find its own identity and go off on its own. And it's getting really, really good, really, really interesting. Um, and the two main characters, Doran and Kusanagi, are actually becoming two really fun characters to watch. So. I'm really looking forward to see where that's gonna go in the future. After that, we have Akane Banashi, which is a manga I would recommend to anybody. It is about Rakugo, it is so much fun. I haven't read the most recent chapter yet, but it is so much fun. I would definitely recommend it. It is one of my, it probably is my favorite manga in Shonen Jump right now. Now that Ayashimon is gone. So definitely check out Akane Banashi. But the moment we've all been waiting for is Tokyo Revengers. Now, once again, this is going to have a lot of spoilers because this is far beyond the anime. I'm caught up to the manga now. So first off, let's just start. Tetsu Kizuki, probably my favorite character. That... I love that character so much. Hanagaki, I've, Takamichi, at first, when I was like, just watching the anime, I really didn't like his character that much. I was like, I was like, he's cool, but like, he wasn't doing much, you know? But as of, I've kind of just grown to appreciate his character because he's just so different. Like, he's not good at fighting, but he's just motivational for everybody else. And just his 
perseverance to move forward, I really respect. So at the end of the, I forgot which arc it was called. I think it's the Tenjiku arc, I think. But after Kizuki dies um, and Takamichi goes back to the future or present and everybody's there, he's about to get married. I was like, yes, this is, I love this. And somebody had commented down that that's around the time when it kind of falls off like after that. And when I was reading, it, I was like, I can see because it feels like it should have just ended right there. Like you had Kizuki as the main villain from day one and then we finally got him. So it's like, what's next? And then you get this whole part with Mikey where now Mikey is the bad guy. And I'm like, okay, I'll give it a chance. So I'm reading it and it's, it's actually still really good to me, honestly. I was still really enjoying it. And then it got to this part where it explains Mikey's negative impulses and it gives a little backstory on him. And the backstory, you know, it felt really out of place. And I felt like that wasn't a good explanation for what it was. If I feel like a better explanation would have just simply to be like, hey, you know, because Baji died, because Draken just died, because, you know, he's, his brother died, all these other people he's losing in his life to explain, you know, him being that way. I think that would have been a better way to handle it. And I don't know, I feel like Ken Wakui tends to do a lot of backstories for characters to explain why they do stuff. And nothing's wrong with that, but I feel like the way it's done feels kind of just forced onto the reader. That's kind of just how I feel about it. Um, you could agree or disagree with me in the comments. I'm curious on how other people feel about that part specifically, or just Tokyo Avengers in general, because apart from just that small moment, from start to finish, I have loved every part of this story, honestly. All of the characters are really interesting. Just the concept of the time travel in order to save the people that Takamichi loves. It's honestly really beautiful. And like I said, just that concept as well as the fact Takamichi is powerless for the most part. He doesn't have, or rather his impact isn't as direct as some other characters would be. The recent chapter I've read was they were fighting, um, I think it's called the, the New Tokyo Manji and the Kanto Manji Yang were fighting. And it is really good. Just watching the struggle of the New Tokyo Manji Yang without, you know, Draken, it's like, damn, you know? But honestly, like I said, Tokyo Avengers, I do really, really enjoy it so far. And I, I hope other people are enjoying it as much as I do. And I look forward to seeing how it finishes off, honestly. But that's really all I had to say about Tokyo Avengers, as well as just what I've been reading for this month. But that's really all for me. Once again, be sure to leave a like, subscribe, hit the bell so you never miss an upload. Follow me on Instagram at SimonSabroYT if you just wanna like message me about manga or whatever really. And once again, comment down what you've been reading, but that's really all I had to say. <laughs> this is Simon Sabra signing out. I catch you on the next one.